The way that SpaceX is already gearing up for the next as soon as the moment one flight ends, we can obviously say that they're going non-stop with this one. With the estimated launch time set, Starbase is buzzing with activity as teams work to resolve Flight 8's issues and prepare for the next big launch. So how is SpaceX tackling these challenges and pushing forward? Let's dive in on today's episode of Great SpaceX to find out. B-15's journey from the orbital launch mount back to the production site's megabay officially marks the end of Flight 8, an eventful mission filled with both record-breaking achievements and technical challenges. Now, all eyes are on Flight 9, the mission that SpaceX hopes will complete a fully successful flight from launch to landing. On March 7th, Musk provided an estimate suggesting Flight 9 could take place in the next four to six weeks. But what will SpaceX be working on during this critical period of preparation? With B-15's post-flight analysis underway, attention has shifted toward upgrades and preparations. One of the most significant updates involves Ship 35, which has been rolled out for testing, following B-16. A key modification spotted on S-35 is the addition of an actual landing pin in place of the previous landing pin hole, similar to what was seen on S-34 and S-36. This suggests that SpaceX is gearing up to test re-entry capabilities and possibly even attempt a ship catch in the near future. Future preparations were signaled by the movement of the lifting jig system, a crucial tool in handling Starship prototypes. Additionally, on March 9th, a new test stand, referred to as the Puck Shucking Cryo Stand, was transported to Mega Bay 2. This system, relatively new to SpaceX's testing process, is expected to serve as a cryogenic test stand for S-35. It's likely that this stand has been upgraded to optimize testing efficiency, reflecting SpaceX's ongoing improvements in its vehicle development process. Meanwhile, at the launch site, efforts to repair and upgrade infrastructure are in full swing. On the evening of March 7th and into the morning of March 8th, SpaceX lifted two vaporizers from the tank farm followed by a third a few hours later. Given that the removal system remained in place, it's possible that more vaporizers will be removed in the coming days. These components will likely undergo repairs and improvements before being reinstalled. The need for these repairs became apparent after Flight 8 when images revealed that certain launch pad systems had sustained damage. One vaporizer was found tilted, leaning against another, while other components were scattered around Starbase. Nearby cameras also appeared slightly damaged. The intense vibrations produced by Starship's liftoff were likely responsible for these issues, emphasizing the sheer power of the vehicle. Addressing these problems is crucial for ensuring the reliability of Flight 9's ground support systems. Beyond these immediate repairs, SpaceX will likely focus on upgrading several key systems ahead of the next launch. The orbital launch mount, the launch tower, and the chopsticks catching mechanism will all require thorough inspections. The OLM's clamp systems, which endured their strongest liftoff yet, will likely need reinforcement. Additionally, the tubing inside the booster quick disconnect system must be checked for any potential issues. Below the OLM, the water-cooled steel plate system will also require careful observation. Despite showing strong performance so far, discoloration observed last year suggests that its longevity could be a concern. Although SpaceX doesn't intend to use this design permanently, it remains an integral part of the launch pad's structure. The chopsticks system, which played a crucial role in B-15's landing, will also undergo close inspection. This includes monitoring the landing rail and actuator, which are directly involved in the catching process. Before Flight 8, the skate system encountered some issues, and given that the catching mechanism was used again recently, now is the perfect time for SpaceX to evaluate its reliability and make any necessary refinements. As for the launch tower, one of the most critical components is the communication antenna system, which plays a direct role in ensuring successful vehicle capture. There are indications that SpaceX has also integrated a distance measuring function into the system to improve accuracy. Given the importance of this technology, it'll likely be a focal point in the lead-up to Flight 9. 
With so many upgrades and repairs in motion, SpaceX is wasting no time in pushing Starship toward greater reliability and success. The next few weeks will be packed with testing, improvements, and final preparations as the company works toward what could be its most successful Starship mission yet. At the tank farm, beyond the vaporizer upgrades already mentioned, additional improvements are necessary to enhance resilience against the intense effects of each launch. One significant change being considered is a complete conversion to a horizontal system, which would mitigate damage from the extreme vibrations and forces experienced during liftoff. Meanwhile, long-term preparations at Starbase continue at full speed. On March 7th, SpaceX raised its massive crane system, likely signaling the final stages of Pad B's construction. This new launch pad may include a flame bucket or an orbital launch mount system, similar to the one at Pad A. Additionally, modifications to the chopsticks catching mechanism are underway, including an upgraded lateral stop block. With the recent challenges faced during Flight 8, a full ship catch attempt may be delayed, allowing more time for thorough testing and construction at Pad B. However, for Flight 9 to proceed on schedule, the pad must ideally be completed within the next four to six weeks. On the vehicle side, B-16 has successfully completed cryogenic testing at Massey and will soon return to the production site for engine installation. Once the engines are integrated, it'll wait for the launch pad refurbishments to finish before conducting static fire testing. Following this critical step, B-16 will return to the production site for further inspections and final installation in preparation for integration testing and flight. During this process, B-16 will undergo extensive checks to ensure a successful mission. One of the primary concerns will be the engine system, particularly after separation. This issue was also observed on Flight 7, and while SpaceX has already made significant upgrades based on Elon Musk's post-flight analysis, further refinements will be necessary to guarantee sustained performance. The fuel pump system will also require reinforcements to prevent pressure instabilities, and the hot staging mechanism will undergo rigorous testing before installation to avoid potential failures. Ship 35 is also advancing through its pre-flight preparations. After its recent rollout, it is now awaiting cryogenic testing, followed by a series of steps similar to B-16's process. In particular, S-35 will need to be equipped with its payload system, requiring additional modifications. Like B-16, its engine system will be a focal point of testing to address issues seen in previous Starship flights. Both Flight 7 and Flight 8 demonstrated that ships tend to encounter severe problems post-separation, cutting their journeys short. Beyond ascent performance, the engines play a crucial role in future space missions as well as in deceleration and controlled navigation for landing. Furthermore, S-35's flap and heat shield systems will undergo extensive validation. These components have received upgrades compared to earlier versions, but they have yet to prove their effectiveness in real-world conditions. Given the extreme heat and aerodynamic forces Starship experiences during re-entry, ensuring these systems function as intended is critical to long-term mission success. In addition to hardware modifications, SpaceX must swiftly conclude its investigation into Flight 8's anomalies and implement corrective actions in coordination with the FAA. Simultaneously, efforts must be made to address any debris recovery or environmental impact concerns in affected areas. SpaceX has already committed to funding cleanup efforts in locations such as the Bahamas, reinforcing its responsibility in mitigating any unintended consequences from the flight. As for the flight profile, no major changes are expected. Super Heavy is still planned to attempt a landing on Mechazilla's arms while the ship will splash down in the ocean. This means that final preparations for the landing zones will need to be completed in the coming weeks to ensure a smooth recovery operation. Following two flights that fell short of full mission success, SpaceX's determination to achieve a breakthrough with Flight 9 is stronger than ever. Every step taken now, every upgrade, every test, and every modification is aimed at reaching that critical milestone. If you're excited, if you're as excited as we are for the next launch, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's incredible journey toward the future of spaceflight. Now, for our final bit of today's news, let's talk about the recent return of the X-37B space plane, a remarkable mission that once again pushed the boundaries of space operations. 
After an impressive 434 days in orbit, the X 37B Orbital Test Vehicle 7, or OTV 7, of the U.S. Space Force successfully returned to Earth. The autonomous space plane made its landing at 2.22 a.m. Eastern at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. That's 11.22 p.m. Pacific, marking yet another milestone for this secretive and highly advanced program. Before its return, the USSF provided a rare glimpse into the mission, releasing an image captured from a camera aboard the X-37B. The breathtaking shot showed Earth alongside the spacecraft's payload bay and solar panel system. Along with the image, the USSF confirmed that OTV-7 had been conducting experiments in a highly elliptical orbit throughout the past year, including an aerobraking test designed to change its orbit while using minimal fuel. Aerobraking is a unique capability of the X-37B, allowing it to use atmospheric drag to adjust its trajectory, a maneuver typically associated with the interplanetary probes rather than Earth-orbiting vehicles. In a statement, Chief of Space Operations Chance Saltzman highlighted the significance of this achievement, stating, Mission 7 broke new ground by showcasing the X-37B's ability to flexibly accomplish its test and experimentation objectives across orbital regimes. The successful execution of the aerobraking maneuver underscores the U.S. Space Force's commitment to pushing the bounds of space novel operations in a safe and responsible manner. Blaine Stewart, X-37B program director, further emphasized the mission's impact. Mission 7's operation in a new orbital regime, its novel aerobraking maneuver, and its testing of space domain awareness experiments have written an exciting new chapter in the X-37B program. Considered together, they mark a significant milestone in the ongoing development of the U.S. Space Force's dynamic mission capability. Beyond its groundbreaking maneuverability, this mission made history as the first X-37B launch aboard a SpaceX Falcon Heavy, reaching a highly elliptical orbit for the first time. This is yet another incredible achievement for the X-37B program, proving its growing versatility and value to the USSF. With each mission, it continues to demonstrate new capabilities, and with SpaceX providing launch support, the future looks bright for even more more ambitious flights ahead. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.